We are Georgia and David. In March of 2022, we quit our jobs to travel the world full time. We are currently exploring Mexico, and our goal is to visit 100 Pueblos Mexicos. We ended up spending nine days in the coastal city of Manzanillo. During our stay, we visited our 53rd Pueblo Mexico, Comala. Welcome to the port city of Manzanillo. We're gonna be spending the next seven days here. And if you stay tuned to the end of the video, we'll show you our Airbnb, we'll give you our top recommendations and a full breakdown of our expenses. But first, we're gonna go check out all there is to see on the Malacan. And since today is a little bit cloudy, we're going to take a day trip. The most interesting sculptures on the Malacón are part of the Paseo de Zodiaco. Here they had an abstract representation of all 12 zodiac signs. Some were obvious, like Scorpio and Cancer, while others were definitely on the abstract side, like this one. Today we've driven about an hour and a half to the Pueblo Mágico of Comala. Comala is actually the only Pueblo Mágico in the state of Colima, and it's only about 15 minutes away from the capital city. I believe this Pueblo Mágico is most well known for a famous poet who lived here, um, and they're also famous for their coffee production and I think delicious bread. After a stroll around their beautiful Zocalo, our first stop was of course the main church. After the church, we checked out some of the local stores in search of some of their famous coffee. After trying the coffee here, I do think we are going to buy some to take home with us. And that is something I would definitely recommend that you do here in Mexico. Um, we have run across a couple times that places that toast their own coffee actually almost burn their own coffee. Some of the dark roasts are actually very, very bitter and over roasted. So I would suggest tasting before you buy. that I think is really interesting that I feel like every Pueblo Mágico we've been to has some like sweetened, creamy liqueurs for sale, but they're always called something different. In some places they've been liqueurs, in other places they've been cremas, in some places they even call them... De aguardientes? Yeah, around Oaxaca it was aguardientes. Um, around the Puebla area they actually called them vinos. And here they call them ponches, which ponche, to my knowledge everywhere else we've been in Mexico, has been like a cooked down uh, kind of syrup 
with a bunch of different fruits in it. Sometimes they add wine, sometimes they do add aguardiente or like a white lightning type uh, liquor to it. But here, ponches are those creamy bottles of liqueur. Very interesting. Lunch at Don Camalone was good, but the music from the local musicians made it even better. Our last stop before heading back to Manzanillo was our famous bakery, La Guadalupana. As you can see, this place was absolutely packed. There were no signs, as all the locals knew exactly which pastry was which. We just grabbed a few that looked good. and we are at Bar Restaurante HOA. You can see that it is ocean front, like literally right on the ocean and that the waves here are super intense. Uh, but the ocean breeze is fantastic. You absolutely cannot beat this view. The next day we hung out by our pool and then headed to the marina to eat at a popular Asian restaurant. As you can see, it is very fancy, but we are very picky when it comes to Asian food. And this just didn't do it for us. The food we had the day before at HOA was cheaper and we enjoyed it a lot more. For our last night, we headed to Morisco's El Capi, which as you can see has an amazing ocean view, live music, and absolutely delicious fresh seafood. Well, this was our Airbnb for the past nine nights here in Manzanillo. We are in the Los Olas uh, neighborhood, and so we were walkable to restaurants and just five minute walk to the beach. Uh, you can see here we had parking for the Jeep behind the gate and you can see they have this really cute uh, little tropical fish mural out here and a really nice patio table with chairs, an umbrella, and the best part of course was the pool. Also we did use the little grill here quite a few times. Behind this door here is a little half bath. Uh, we did not really use this half bath because it has a strong sewer smell coming up from it. Up these steps here, you can see you have a really nice view and a big kind of terrace space. Uh, we were able to hang our laundry to dry here. And just back behind those condos is the ocean. So you can actually hear the waves from here. Also on this second floor is a full bedroom with an ensuite. So you can see here, double bed. Looks like they're actually getting ready to put in like a little kitchen area here. And then full bath. This space was the only space without an air conditioner, so we didn't really use it at all. All right, so back downstairs, if you enter the main house here, you can see it's quite compact. There's a little table with our modem, little couch, TV, fan, small but very functional kitchen. Had a six burner stove, had a fridge freezer combo, and right out there, you can see we had a clothes washer, which was great. Here is the full bath. You can see sink, mirror, Nice big shower, and of course, toilet. Here was what we would consider the master bedroom. It is a double bed, uh, but it was quite comfortable. Got some closet space and storage here, and then a big AC unit. This area uh, had a AC unit as well, and between the two, they were able to keep the main living area cool as well. But you can see we have single beds here, 
and more closet space there. During our nine days, we ate at the following restaurants. We highly recommend Morisco's El Capi for their seafood and the view, Restaurante Juanitos for their amazing local and cheap breakfast, El Vaquero if you're in the mood for a steak, and Bar HOA if you want some solid food, beachfront with great cocktails. In Manzanillo, there are three main beach areas. We didn't find any of them particularly swimmable, so we spent most of our days by our pool at our Airbnb, which we highly recommend and we'll link below. We only took one day trip while we were there to Kamala and would highly recommend it, especially if you're in the market for some coffee. And now for what we spent. That Airbnb with a private pool for nine nights set us back $640. We spent $149 on transportation, which includes some gas as well as the tolls to Kamala. Entertainment was just $3. We paid for some mariachi. Restaurants, $480. Groceries, $339. Utilities were $23. We had two Telcel recharges while we were there. And personal care came in at $123, which did include a doctor's visit and a little bit of lab work. That grand total is $1,757 or just $195 a day. Not too bad for a beach destination and a private pool. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them down below. If you haven't already, check out this video here where we go over our cost of living for 28 days in the Pueblo Magico of tequila.